Hello and welcome once more to yet another Red Gamer Tech video. Myself, Amata. I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Apologies for the slightly late video yesterday. YouTube had a bit of an oopsie in quite a few places and I had a bit of a time uploading. But um, I'm here now, that's the important thing. And we're going to kick things off with some very big news from AMD and Samsung. So, as we learned at Computex in 2019, AMD are going to be using RDNA-based graphics silicon, the architecture that is going to be in Navi. And AMD and Samsung have announced a pretty huge partnership between the two companies where Samsung are going to be licensing that very same RDNA graphics silicon. And we're going to see that embedded into future mobile devices, including, of course, smartphones. So future Samsung phones are going to have Radeon inside of them. Now, I'm sure you guys can appreciate without me having to tell you how huge this news actually is for AMD. Now, we don't know exactly how big of an impact that the RDNA is going to have. For example, we already knew that Samsung had been working on their own SGPUs for quite a few years now, back in 2012. So... It might be some time before we see this actually being implemented into real devices. It's really hard to say because it's entirely possible that even though Samsung said way back that the SGPUs um, were sort of being worked on, it's entirely possible that AMD has kind of been involved from then and they've only just announced it now. Or there could be something else going on entirely. Perhaps we'll see it on future devices. It's, it's really tough to say exactly how much RDNA we're going to be seeing involved in these future smartphones. But regardless of all the semantics... This is still massive for AMD, it's going to be extremely lucrative and does also bode well for what they can achieve with RDNA in mobile form factor. So just to kind of give stock of the areas that AMD have now sort of managed to worm their way into, they've got Google, Stadia of course, Microsoft and Sony and now Samsung and that's just for GPU technology, I'm not talking about anything else. So yeah, this is pretty huge. And I have a bit of a statement here from AMD's Dr. Lisa Su, and she said, quote, adoption of our Radeon graphics technologies across PC, game console cloud, and HPC markets has grown significantly, and we are thrilled to announce partner with industry leader Samsung to accelerate graphics innovation in the mobile market. This strategic partnership will extend the reach of our high-performance Radeon graphics into the mobile market, significantly expanding the Radeon user base and development ecosystem. And of course, to go alongside this way, I also have a statement from Samsung as well, who said, quote, as we prepare for disruptive changes in technology and discover new opportunities, our partnership with AMD will allow us to bring groundbreaking graphics products and solutions to market for tomorrow's mobile applications. We look forward to working with AMD to accelerate innovations in mobile graphics technologies that will help take future mobile computing to the next level. So obviously we're going to be seeing Samsung take that graphic silicon from AMD and obviously do their own thing with it. So it might be some time before we see a mobile device with this because as I say they've already been working on their own SGPUs for about 7 years or so. And I highly doubt they're just going to chuck that in the bin. Um, but still, pretty huge news from AMD. And speaking of AMD, we have some more good news as Ryzen continues to sell very well. Now, constant viewers of this channel will probably know the words I'm about to say. This is thanks to the German retailer MindFactory.de, who are the biggest retailer in Germany. So, we have the latest market share results thanks to a Reddit user by the name of Ingebor, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. And according to MindFactory.de's data, we saw the significant lead that AMD had over Intel basically continue in this particular uh, month. So let's talk the actual nitty gritty percentages, shall we? This is for the month of May 2019, and AMD Ryzen CPUs and APUs had a share of 66%, whereas Intel had a share of 34%. And just to clarify, that is in terms of raw amount of CPUs sold. When it comes to the amount of revenue each um, company made, the disparity between the two is much, much closer. It's a difference of just a couple of percent. Whereas AMD in May had 51% of the share in terms of revenue and Intel had 49%. Now... Obviously, this is for the month of May, when most people sort of in the know are probably aware that we're going to be seeing Ryzen 3000 excuse me, being announced 
or detailed at least, sorry, should I say, at Computex. So a lot of this can be put down to the significant discounts that, that the um, old Ryzen's were receiving. And of course, there was that AMD 50 promotion, where of course, you there was a bunch of discounts for Ryzen 3000, of course there was a special editions of um, Radeon 7 and of course Ryzen as well. So it wasn't just due to significant price cuts, but that definitely played a part and of course again that AMD 50 celebration. So even though obviously AMD were taking a little bit of a hit in terms of the fact that they were trying to shift stock, you know, making it a little bit cheaper because obviously Ryzen 3000 is going to be out soon, they still managed to be in the lead in terms of revenue and significantly in the lead when it comes to the amount of CPUs sold. And we can even go further into it in terms of what CPUs they actually sold. So 71% were Pinnacle Ridge are being Ryzen uh, 2000 CPUs, 18% was Raven Ridge, which is Ryzen 2000 APUs, and 10% was Summit Ridge, which is the previous generation Ryzen, and then just 1% was Threadripper. As for Intel, we saw 59% be Coffee Lake Refresh, that which is of course the ninth generation. Coffee Lake itself, eighth gen, making up 33%. Seventh gen, sorry. Yeah, Cable Lake is 7% 7th gen and 1% is Skylake X. So it's going to be very interesting to see the figures when we actually see Ryzen 3000 release because this has pretty much been the story across all of these reports from MineFactory.ede where we see a significant lead in terms of the amount of CPU sold and a slight lead in terms of revenue despite the significant difference in price because of course even when they're not reduced Ryzen is still cheaper than the 9th generation, 8th generation, and so on from Intel. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the Ryzen 3000 and, of course, Intel's offerings actually go head-to-head -head in this particular market. Will we see the results perhaps shift the other way, or will we see the trend continue even more? Of course, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait and see, because, as, as per usual, I have misplaced my crystal ball. So... Let's move on, shall we, to our final topic for today, which is none other than Google Stadia. Of course, we're talking a lot about E3 this year, and deservedly so. It's going to be one of the biggest in recent memory, I think, because obviously we're expecting to get something from Microsoft about the Xbox Scarlet, and of course um, AMD are supposed to be there, and Nvidia as well. And just a week previous to E3, we're going to be getting something from Google regarding the Stadia as they have now announced that a Stadia Connect event will be taking place on June the 6th, which is shortly before the actual E3 2019 event. So, this isn't actually during E3, as I just said, but the timing of this is obviously not coincidental. It's literally a week before, or the following week, should I say. E3 is the following week, <laughs> eventually I got there, sorry about that. And... We have seen companies do this more and more, perhaps because E3 is getting too expensive, or perhaps like there's too many companies sort of fighting for the limelight, or maybe it's a bit of both, or other reasons that I'm not aware of. But either way, a lot of companies have decided to sort of move outside of E3 and do their own thing. I'm not surprised to see Google do the same thing. Obviously, I wouldn't be surprised to see them there in the future, actually at E3. But it's going to be interesting to see exactly what's going on with with Stadia. Of course, Google did previously promise that we would be getting more details this summer, including the all-important price tag, games, and launch information. So I would fully expect that the summer event that they promised is going to be this one at E3, because June is, I would say, officially summertime. Now, obviously, I think the most important thing, or one of the most important things for Google to get right here is that price tag. If it's too expensive, it's just not going to sell because there's a lot of valid, valid concerns about streaming. Now, obviously, Google know what they're doing. They're not... You know, this isn't their, their first time at the Rodeo sort of thing, but you still have that concern of, yeah, but my local internet is just crap. Like, you can have all the amazing servers and all these other bits and bobs going on, you know, in the background as you want, but you still will have that issue for people to worry about. Now, obviously, we did see reports that the early build that people were playing at the recent event that Google had, that it was a bit laggy. Obviously, that is an early build. They were still working on things, so that is definitely something you need to get right and obviously the price as well. So if as long as it's not too expensive, I think people will be willing to give it a try as trying to what I'm, what I'm getting at, and then, then perhaps they'll be pleasantly surprised that it works better than they thought. But I think it being too expensive, plus that concern of the internet is probably just going to mean this is just sort of DOA. But of course, 
Google probably has something up their sleeve when it comes to this and are undoubtedly going to be having some sort of demonstration for people to be able to test and see for themselves, oh, okay, this actually is pretty good, even on Wi-Fi or whatever. So it's going to be intriguing to see. I want to know your thoughts, guys, if you're at all interested in Google Stadia or if you're just flat out like, no, it's too early, too early for real uh, game streaming in this way at the moment. Internet infrastructure just isn't, isn't there yet. Or... Are you perhaps a little more hopeful that Google's got some trick up their sleeves to kind of kick us into high gear when it comes to that? Either way, let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything discussed in the comments below. Thank you so much for all your support. It really does mean a huge deal to both myself and Paul, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.